Hello, right. Welcome to my house for Discover Dorico for April 2020. Uh, let's, uh, so you can see, here I am. So, we run these sessions live at the end of every month, if you've not seen one before. If you have any questions you'd like answered in these sessions, please email discoverdorico at steinberg.de. That's all one word, discoverdorico at steinberg.de. My name's John. Um, today, so today, April 2020, if you're watching this on demand or after this session's finished, it will be available online. Um, I'll be using Dorico 3.1.10. Um, please update if you have if you've got version three and you haven't already. Um, there's a few people sent me files uh, recently, and I thought, oh, actually, I can tell you're missing a couple of things. Or yeah, it's a free update for version three users. So please update if you haven't from our website already. Um, I'll be using Dorico Pro today, but most, if not all, of the things we look at today will apply to Elements and SE. Uh, although it depends on the number of instruments, of course, in the files that you'll be importing. Today we'll be mainly discussing Music XML import. Um, I'll try and keep an eye on the chat, which is over here. Let me just uh, turn my camera off for a second so I can go and read this chat. Um, sound is perfect. Good, good. Like to hear. Um, so as long as you can, you can all hear me. Um, don't forget in the bottom uh, right hand corner, he says pointing. Oh, what a doofus. So in the bottom corner of the screen, you've got a little cog. So it'll be that side. Um, and if you click on that cog, then you can check that the um, the resolution you should be able to get up to uh, to HD 1080, um, and obviously that you can hear with the speaker icon, which I guess is this side, um, so you can hear what's going on. Um, I'll check the chat window, so if you want to uh, chat and ask me any questions in there, but. Um, uh, so if it's about the you know the subject today, which is mainly music XML import, I am going to also just at the end um, look a little bit, hopefully as long as we have time, uh, of independent voice playback as well, because um, they were things that were asked for recently in um, uh, via Facebook and via email and everything else. Um, so in this session, we have looked previously a little bit at um, MIDI import options and requantizing and that kind of thing. We'd looked, I think, oh, quite a while ago at some music XML import things, um, but it's come up a few times recently and it's been asked for, so I thought, actually, it's worth looking at this time, I think, and, uh, and some options. Um, so I suppose first, one of the, one of the things um, you might be thinking about is, you know, well, why not just use um, MIDI if you're importing? So we're talking about bringing files in to Dorico. What are the options, the pitfalls, how you can reset things, how you can change things, uh, and that kind of thing. Um, so why not use a, just use a MIDI file? Um, you know, and yes, you can do that. Um, MIDI files, they describe things, they describe the music slightly differently. So your note lengths are going to be described as MIDI ticks, um, which is can be useful. Um, sometimes though, for things like tuplets, you, you actually want them to be described as, for example, a triplet, um, rather than as three notes, which might have the same number of MIDI ticks, give or take a few, uh, or you know, the sort of the same length and we have to interpret them. Also MIDI um, will give you note velocities, uh, which can be useful for playback, but it won't necessarily give you a dynamic marking. Um, and MIDI will also give you controller data. So if the playback of things and the controller data that you're using is useful, then yes, you may well want to use a MIDI file. It's all basically sound information. That's what they're, you know, it, it's useful for. And that's why it's more likely uh, you'll be using that kind of data in a door. And if you're importing things into Cubase, Logic, um, any of the others um, from Dorico or from another program, then you'll probably use a MIDI file. But if you're music XML files, the difference is that uh, with a music XML file, your dynamic markings won't just be necessarily note velocities. In fact, they won't be music note velocities in a music XML file, but you would get dynamics. You would actually get piano and forte on the score. Um, your note lengths will be described as musical note lengths. So they will be, for me, a crotchet and a quaver. For some of you, a quarter note and an eighth note. Um, there will also be lines and other text markings in there. Um, you also have options for things like stem direction. So not only do the notes have a, you know, a, a graphical style and a stem, but is it stems up or stems down? Um, is it that note beamed to another note or a group of other notes? There's instrument instrument information, so the they're not just MIDI tracks. They are effective. They are staves. They have uh, you know instrument information about that particular instrument as well potentially, um, and also you know things like keys and clefs. Basically, it's all graphical information. So 
A reason to use a music XML file, of course, with a notation program, is because it's a much more graphical way of, of describing uh, all of that music. Um, so I just thought, for you know, right back to basics, why might you want uh, one versus the other? And the music XML is what we're going to be looking at today. So in a music XML, I mean, the, it's a file format, basically, um, like, like a MIDI file is. There are more than 240 programs that include music XML file support. So there, there's more than 240 programs out there that can import or export music XML files. So if it, it's like, it, it's what you call an open format because lots of other programs can, uh, can read and write uh, those files. So it's a very good way of sharing files. It also can be useful as a, a good use as a backup. Um, because if you save your file as music XML, then you're very, very likely to be able to open it in many, many other programs. Um, if you're coming from Cubase or Logic, uh, some other doors, then you'll need to use the score editor to be able to export a music XML file. So for example, in Cubase, uh, you need to press Command or Control R to get to the score editor, and then you can use the music XML option, otherwise it's grayed out. It's very similar in Logic. Um, so you might not have previously been aware that those options uh, exist. Um, but yeah, just in case you need to find them in those programs, then, then you can. Uh, obviously, scanning programs, they will also export music XML. So if you're using Photoscore or uh, SmartScan or um, if you have, um, you know, even some of the ones on a, on a phone now. So if you've got PlayScore and things like that, they will all um, export music XML files when they've done the job of scanning. Uh, and you can import those files. Of course, notation programs. Um, notation programs will generally all import and export music XML files. They might be from a tablet. It might be that your workflow is that you start, or start out on StaffPad. They've now got an iOS version um, on the Surface, Microsoft Surface. Or if you're using Notion, um, you know, if you're starting something like that because you wanted to be more mobile when you started the composition process, um, then they both export music XML files as well. Um, you might, of course, be using Sibelius, Finale, uh, one of the other notation programs, uh, and you can import and export music XML from there. So if you want to try Dorico out and you've not tried some of these, you can take some of your existing projects from uh, Sibelius or Finale. You can go file export, save them as a music XML file, and then um, bring those into Dorico and, uh, and you've got your files there. Um, just a, a quick point, some of the older versions, um, for example, older versions of Sibelius, uh, you might need, they didn't have music XML export uh, in them, uh, as an option, but if you go to musicxml.com, there's a little, uh, it's called a Dole plugin, D-O-L-E-T, um, and you can install that as a plugin for Sibelius. Uh, I believe as far back as Sibelius 2, um, but there's also um, one for version 5.1 and up, I think. Um, and in some cases, that will also give you slightly different results in the music XML file. So even the new new versions of, uh, of uh, Sibelius and Finale, you might in some cases want to try exporting via the Dole plugin because you may well get slightly different results from the export of both of those. Um, there's a quick... Um, Oh yes, yes. Um, uh, also on the kind of these uh, export things, um, Frank said the same thing for Logic users in the in the chat there. Keep in mind you need to have the notation window in focus, otherwise the XML export option will be grayed out. Yes. So there's kind of a, a few things um, you know in in doors you need to get to the option for music XML export. For older versions of Sibelius, see musicxml.com. Uh, there's also a um, a plugin you can get, a Sibelius plugin you can get to batch convert. So if you're thinking, oh my goodness, I've got an awful lot of Sibelius files and I'd like to, even if it's just for safety, um, to export them as uh, music XML and there's a PDF option as well. Um, you, there's a, a batch plugin option where you can just give it a folder that's full of Sibelius files and it will export them all as uh, PDF and music XML files. So that can be a useful backup option as well as you, know, um, you can then import those into Dorico. So hopefully that First bit's um, clear. Uh, there doesn't seem to be any questions in the chat from those. I can see that uh, you're all here, though. I'm surprised some of you are awake from some of the um, comments that you're saying where you're from, but it's lovely that you're all here. Um, as I said, um, ask in the chat window if you do have anything, um, but you can also, of course, email. So discover Dorico, which is all one word, discoverdorico at steinberg.de, and I'll um, pick up those emails. So if you're watching this on demand, then you can still ask your questions. So let's have a look at some of these things and you know, the import options and uh, how all these kind of things work. 
So the first thing is that actually in Dorico, it's slightly different on the import process versus a MIDI file. If you're importing a MIDI file, you open the MIDI file and then you get some preferences uh, as to what you want to do with that MIDI file. Um, at, for Music XML file, if you go to Dorico preferences, um, then in here there's a Music XML import section. And it's a good idea to have a look at some of these um, some of these options in preferences so that you know what you're going to import and, and why. So in here, there are options for, the, there's a notes and chords section, a rests and another notation section. What all of this means, basically, if the box is ticked, it means that we, Dorico will import those options from the XML file. So if the stem directions box is ticked and you've spent time on the stem directions in, for example, another notation program, and you definitely want those stem directions to be imported, tick the box, and Dorico will then import those options for you. Um, if, you're, if you haven't spent any time on those things in another notation program, don't tick the box, and Dorico will apply our own rules for those stem directions. And you can always change the stem directions later, and we can, we'll look into a bit more of that. Similarly with beam groupings. If you've spent time on the beam groupings in another program, then fine. Leave the box ticked, and we'll import those beam groupings. Uh, the same for articulation placement and tuplet placement and, and various other things. Um, so, uh, in fact, so I'll, I'll tick some of these. So let's tick articulation placement as well. There's some options for rests about rest durations um, uh, and how the, the, the rests are handled. If you want those to be imported from the file, tick the boxes. And for other notations, dynamics placement. So it's things like is the dynamic above or below the staff? Um, you know, those, those kind of things, slur directions, is the slur going up or down, uh, you know, over the top or underneath. If you want us to pick those out of the file, then, then tick the box and we'll import those. Uh, there's also one here for text items. Um, sometimes in a music XML file, it's not necessarily absolutely clearly defined what an item is. Uh, and so when another program imports it, sometimes you get, for example, you don't get all of the tempo information that you had because some of it was just text. And, and if the program didn't know what to do with it, then it just ignores it. I prefer personally to have this option ticked so that I don't miss anything. So um, if you leave it ticked, the worst case is you'll get extra information that you can select and delete. And I personally prefer that rather than missing something and, you know, and, and having to recreate it later when I realize that it was missing. So I, I leave that option ticked. So like I said, all of these options, you can apply these and close it, and they now apply for any music XML file you open. So it may be that you want to occasionally skip to the preferences to check that before you import a file. So let's import a few and have a look. So I've, um, I, I've got a few here with some options and things that I wanted to show. Um, and uh, just reading the comments, no Andrew, no logos have fallen off a wall yet. Um, I'm not even showing a wall, so they can't fall off. Uh, so on this example here, I'm just gonna remove the extra float header that I don't need. So I've imported this file. I'm gonna say uh, show uh, flow headings. Actually, I should do this in the part, really. Let's show flow headings never and skip over to the part. Just press W and skip to the part. So here we've got uh, a file that I've imported. So now in this one, um, the options that we had ticked, just to, to have a quick look at them again, were, for example, things like tuplet placement and bracket visibility. So we've imported those from the file. So the, that's why the tuplet brackets, some are above and some are below, because we've imported those as they were set in the original file that we imported. So, um, so this, I mean, Dorico's usefully not making things collide. It's also usefully this bar actually extends. It's not trying to cram it all into one line. Um, but the, the, the important thing here is that, you know, where articulations, where slurs, where tuplets are, we've ticked those boxes. So it's imported those options from the original file. So um, if you didn't tick those options, then you get slightly different results and that may not be what you want. So for example, if we don't save this file and we untick the tuplet bracket placement options and we reopen the file, then what you'll get, for example, is this where, yes, all the tuplets are there, but they're all underneath um, because that's what the uh, the options are set. Now, there's nothing to stop you changing some of these later, you know, and in some cases that will be what you want to do. But it was just to show a simple case of what some of these options do and whether you want these options to be turned on or off. Um, and you do that, as I said, in the preferences before you open the file. So I'm going to tick that option again. So uh, in another example, let's have a look at uh, another file with some different instrumentation. 
Uh, so here we've got uh, a, a file which I have show, probably shown before actually, but what was useful in this file is it's a good, a good use of uh, and a good case for showing you the kind of things that you wouldn't get in a MIDI file. So these trill markings you wouldn't get in a MIDI file. You get lots and lots and lots of notes instead. Um, the dynamic markings you wouldn't get in a MIDI file. Um, the text information here and of course the dynamics. You wouldn't have got these from a, a MIDI file either. So it's a good case of why you might want to import a music XML file. But if I scroll around in this file you'll see that in some cases there are articulations here which are all above the, the staff. And I think, uh, yes, there's also some, you know, the, the slur directions and things like that. They've all been imported because those options were ticked. Now, what you can do is you could change these options. So, for example, let's say uh, we don't want the articulation placement and let's turn off the slur direction as well and apply those. It won't apply to this file. If you want to keep this version, you could. There's, as well as the file open, which is what I've been using for the music XML files, there's also an import option. So you could do file import music XML, and what that will do is import the file, let's take the same one again, into this project. I'm going to merge with existing players, because they'll all be the same players at this point anyway. And what you will then get is it will import the file again into the existing project. So what you'll notice is in setup mode, I have the original one I imported, and I've got a copy of it here. So I've got them both in the same project. Sometimes it's a useful thing to do if you need to copy and paste things between um, th these two flows. Um, then you can do that if you want to. So now in this file, for example, you know, we've got all the information as we had it before. Um, the slurs looks like that's where they were going to be anyway, but what were the, oh yes, we were looking at some of the articulations and things. You know, we can, if necessary, then uh, if they'd been specified in the music XML file, then they can be imported or, or changed as necessary. Now, because I now haven't ticked those, um, what you'll find is that in the, the preferences, then the articulation placements, you can get different options. So if, we, um, if we're in the second flow here, then, uh, oh, okay, that one actually has imported anyway, so that was okay. So, but you, you, you'll have options. In some cases, you'll want to, uh, you know, to then change things and reset things when you're in Dorico. So, let's just look at a couple of other options and kind of pitfalls and things you might fall into and why you might want to uh, change things or what are the kind of things you can change and reset. Um, so, what I've done a few times is kind of realise part way through a project, oh, I shouldn't have imported it with that option on, now what do I do? Um, so, um, one of the things you, some of the things you might want to, uh, to do and change, uh, for example, if we have a look in setup mode, what you'll find is uh, Dorico will import lots of, uh, lots of things here and it will take a good old guess in most cases from the name here as to what's, what the instruments are and what's going on. But in actual fact here, I think this one sounds like it's importing some of the wrong instruments. Yeah, some of them, some of them are correct. And if you have a look in play mode, then what you'll find is over here, yeah, we've got some flutes in here instead of uh, the, the basset horns or horns that we should have had, um, which, which isn't correct. Now you could, change these in here. You could, you know, load, select the, the load program option, which has just appeared on my second monitor here. You could choose this, you know, load option and, uh, you know, and search for things in here and change the sounds. But I don't recommend doing that one normally. Uh, normally what I'd do is say you want to change these um, by doing a change instrument over here, because that may change a whole bunch of things usefully for you. Because if you change the sound, you may also still want to change these labels, for example, the text labels for the instrument. You might also want to change some other things. So what you probably want to do is go to change instrument in here. And so, for example, if you were looking for a basset horn, then you can do you can change that, and you'll then get the correct labels. And in play mode, you'll get the correct sample loaded down here, or as close as we can we can get to it, depending on whether you're using Halion or Note Performer. Um, and potentially the transposition will be correct, um, and the, or sorry, the transposition will be more correct, and the ranges of the instruments should be more correct as well. So actually a change instrument is often a good idea um, to change some of the things to be the, the correct instruments, and it will do kind of multiple things all in one go. But what I would say is, that what you'll then end up with is a whole bunch of 
extra instruments down here. So there's now a flute staff we're not using and a, another one down here. So what I would then do is once you've been through and potentially changed one or more instruments that you need to in here, then go to play mode. And when you've made all those instrument changes, go to playback template, choose your playback template, which is for, for pro is HSSE and HSO. If uh, there's some elements and uh, SE playback templates as well, but you can reapply that. Uh, this halium will disappear and reload. And when the little play icon goes green, you know everything's reloaded. You can wait for it in your own time. Uh, and then when you go into Halion, actually we could have watched them load as well if we wanted to, you'll then have, so for example now, you're using those, the, those slots up. You don't have slots hanging around. Um, I, I mention this one because in some cases I've been sent files where I'm thinking there are far too many slots actually loaded because Dorico is trying to be helpful and lo load it for you. And then you've made manual changes uh, and you can tell that those are all of those extra slots. So when you've finished making your uh, instrument changes down here, then uh, re reset the playback template before you start doing you know, any other work or anything else. Um, Moving on to a couple of other things and files and resets and things. Oh, I haven't checked the just to check to see if there's anything in, in the chat. Doesn't look like it. Harry, that sounds like you might want to email me or take some medication. I'm not sure. Um, how do I quickly copy and paste chord symbols without pasting the notes? Um, Massimo. You, if you're copying and pasting between instruments, don't, um, because actually what you should do is in setup mode, you should right click on the instrument and you should just turn on the chord symbols. So show for all instruments, for example. Um, and then you don't need to copy and paste them to other instruments. If you're copying and pasting, for example, an A section to a B section, then I would select one of the chords and I use select more. Um, which uh, on my Mac is Command Shift A. So select one chord and then Command Shift A to select some of the other ones. Um, if that wasn't clear, uh, email me and I'll, uh, I'll I'll send you more information for that. Um, Dan's replied, yeah, you could also use the system track and filter to select the chord symbols. Yes, you can make a selection and then filter the chord symbols and then copy them. It kind of depends on the case. There's uh, There's multiple things. The reason I suppose I don't use the specific filters for chord symbols and I use select more is that I only have to remember one shortcut. Um, so we, if you, uh, is there a case here? No, let's just um, uh, make one. So if I've got some dynamics and I select one dynamic and press select more, it will select more of the dynamics. Um, if I had violin up bows uh, or down bows and I select one and you select more, it will select more of those. Uh, if I've got chord symbols, as you just asked, then it will select more chord symbols. So I tend to you select more because I can then just use one shortcut for them. But it, um, yeah, uh, hopefully that will help a little bit. But like I said, email me, discoverdorico at steinberg.de if you want any more information on that. Uh, I was looking at this file. Why was I? Oh, yes. So in this particular example, there's other things you might want to reset. So because of the options we imported, he says looking, the beam groupings were imported, this file um, has got some, uh, some specific options. Now, in this case, that's actually probably what I wanted. But if I didn't, if I wanted to reset these beam groupings to the Dorico options, uh, for beam groupings, you can select the notes or the whole thing or anything else. You can go to beaming and reset beaming. And that will then reset some of these, uh, the, the beaming options that you've got. And now we've got stemlets here. Why have we got stemlets, you're asking? No? Okay, just me. Um, so for those kind of things, if you go into notation options and beam grouping and beams and rests, then there's an option here for use stemlets. So if you don't want them, then turn them off. Choose one of the other options depending on what you want. And press apply and close. And then you won't have those stemlets anymore. Um, the other thing in this particular file I was going to have a quick look at is that you may also find that when, it in, when Dorico imports the instruments down here, you'll see some of them will be section players and some of them will be solo players. So it may not be that you necessarily need to change the instrument, but you need the violin one to actually be a section violin player. So if I add a new section player down at the bottom down here, uh, which Dorico will do. Uh, oh yes, I forgot this is a relatively large score and I'm uh, trying to do things quickly, my mistake. Um, I don't need that bit, so I will just press escape to get rid of that. I have an empty handed player here now, so I can take the violin one and I can drag it now to make it a section player 
for the uh, instead so the empty handed player will then become the violin one part which is a section player should do examples in a uh, quick examples in a smaller score and I can now put this back where I want it yes, I think it's about 120 pages it's just kind of reformatting for me should have thought of this in advance and then I can delete this because uh, this is an empty player so I can just delete that player because I don't need them and I can delete the player and the part layout which will delete this uh, part layout I don't need over here because I've just made a new one um, so now I have a violin one section and you might say oh but what's the difference well the difference is Dorico will load a section sound for the section player instead of solo violin sound what you probably have had there is a solo violin sound so now when again when I've made these changes made the right instruments into section players if necessary or solo players if they've been imported wrong I've got some here for percussion they might not matter as much but again you you probably want those to be uh, solo players and then reset your playback template so that Dorico can uh, get rid of any slots that it had loaded that you don't need anymore. Um, of course, what you'd also might want to do for large scores like this one um, is you might want to do things like your uh, horns one and two here. You might want to split these up now. Uh, if you want to use the Dorico condensing function, then actually what you'll do is in setup mode, create a couple of new players, um, and then you can uh, move these notes down. And the way I'd normally do that is in setup mode, create some new players. Uh, so I just normally use uh, Shift P and then type the name of the thing I want. I realize my Mac's struggling to do OBS and everything else and Dorico and a large project and I've got too many things open, but never mind. Uh, I'll type horn because then I can get to the, the right type of horn I need and press enter. It's a very quick way of finding the right instrument. Um, yes, it would be nice one day if we put these in orchestral order but it also lets you do any other order you want to do so if you then drag this horn into wherever you need it in the score um, then what you'll find is that when you select these notes either by filtering or uh, any other method depending on what you need then you can move them down to the staff below um, so there are some options down here in paste special for move to staff below as a shortcut so you can filter or select or whatever you need for these notes and just move them into the, the staff below on mass or in sections or whatever you would find useful um, so the so as i said in the, this one if you there are some things that you don't necessarily need to tick or untick in the, the preferences. For, for things like the beaming, you can reset them later if you want to. Um, but the other thing I normally find in music XML files is that these clefs appear like this and you can select them. Normally you can't select a clef in Dorico. Excuse me. If you can select a clef, it means it's an extra clef. It's been kind of imported afterwards. So what I would normally do is go through and just uh, delete, press delete, so that the clef can't be selected anymore. And this will happen in any file. So, um, in fact, there's, uh, yeah, I've, I've got another one open here as well, haven't I? Um, so in any file you import, what Dorico actually does is it's importing the file and it says, okay, we're, we're adding an oboe, great, an oboe will have a treble clef. And then the music XML file says, by the way, it's got a treble clef. And instead of going, yeah, we know, we go, okay, well, just in case, we'll add that treble clef for you. So you just go through and you can delete them. So you can select the clefs for all of these instruments. Now you see, I can't select this clef. You might say, well, what's the difference? Really, does it matter? What you may find with some instruments, for example, baritone saxophones or thing, any instrument, tubers maybe, where the clef might be different between the score and the parts. When the music XML file comes in, you might find that the clef you, that you've got for the score isn't actually the one you expected. Baritone sax, for example, is a very good option, said the sax player, where you would want to not only do a change instrument, even if it actually says baritone saxophone, to make sure that the clef and transposition are correct, but you'd also probably want to select the clef and delete it to make sure you've kind of reset to Dorico defaults and it really is a baritone sax with the right clef, the right transposition and the right uh, note range. Um, so I generally do that kind of by default. Part of my music XML cleanup is to go through every instrument, just make sure where there's a clef that I've deleted it like this so that I know later on I'm not going to get tripped up by looking at a part and realising that there's a wrong clef in there or anything else. So I just do it as a kind of a step at the beginning of deleting everything. Uh, let me go. I might as well do that to go all the way to the end of this one now. There we go. Deleted. There we go. Um... The other, one of the other things I said I was showing was, 
was, uh, was it this one? No, maybe it was the other. Oh, yes, here we go. You'll also find that sometimes when you import things, things like Cresc probably didn't import as a dynamic. It's probably imported as text. Um, so when you look, for example, in the properties panel, it just says it's text. If you double click on it, it's the word Cresc. That might be okay, but in some cases, what you'll need to do is delete those and re-enter them. Um, because they they aren't correct, so you might want to you know delete a bunch of them, make a, a selection, and enter the dynamics all at the same time. So you know doing doing things like this, and then you know putting the, the, the crescendos back in. And if you wanted Cresc, then of course you can change it as a gradual style at the bottom. Um, but you'll need to delete all of these other ones. You see, they're also potentially not the right font because we've just imported it as a text item. You may also find this for now. I don't know if this file or one of the other files. Oh yes, you say when. I said I was importing text. I've got things twice. That's okay because I can now delete one because I know it's you know I, I know it's just um, superfluous. That's no problem. Um, you'll get some cases where oh um, I think by default in my version of Dorico I've got wings on repeat bar lines. Just in case anybody's wondering, I can turn that off in preferences. Um, actually, in the the this bigger file. What you may find is things like these rehearsal marks. You may also get them added as text. Just if Dorico wasn't sure, then it will also add them. And what you'll sometimes find is that they get added differently here to the, the one that Dorico's created. And that's when you know, oh, yes, actually, that was changed in the original file. So you can just delete those extra instances. But here's another good example where the, uh, the tempo marking here, Dorico has interpreted this text and presumed it's Allegro Crotchet equals 120. Sorry, quarter equals 120. But actually, the, in the file, it said this. And that's a good case where you can then say, ah, OK, now there's a discrepancy. I can ch edit this one in the Dorico properties panel down here to make it correct. Uh, and it may be that um, you, you, know, you, you also want to check against the original file. Maybe export, a, if you can, a PDF of the original as well so you know what it looked like in case you need to make any slight tweaks. But this is a good case of why you would want to import, the, the, leave the text option ticked as well so that you can easily see things that are changed that you, want to, uh, that you need to change. So, for example, deleting that extra three because it was a text item, um, changing the, the tempo markings here uh, and things like that. Uh, is there, oh yes, and also things like um, if you've imported text and leave that same text option ticked, and the one I'm talking about is the one in, in preferences down here, right at the beginning we looked at this text items, I would leave that ticked for things like these A2 markings, um, because of course in uh, in most other programs it, there isn't an automatic condensing option, um, so these were probably just added as text items, and you probably want to know that. So this is where you'd now need to copy these notes to move them to the staff below. Um, actually, no, you don't want to move them, do you? You want to copy them, so that was a daft thing to do. Um, but you know, you, you can see now, so that you can see what you need to be able to do with those items, to be able to say, ah, yes, actually at this point, I need to actually do something about that, because these text items will also appear, which is a bit more useful. Um, I think that was probably okay. Let me just check. There was also uh, I noticed in this file, yeah, things like here. This is a text item, poker, poker, cresc. So you'd need to do something about that. And you might find another good reason to have text box ticked is nope, can't find them. If you've got things like poco, sempre poco, things like that, um, these dolces as well then they all may need to be you know, re-added as dynamics. There are sometimes things you need to fix or change because either the music XML format doesn't really have a way of describing that or the program that you've exported it from hasn't exported it as that particular item or you or the person who originally did that file, and obviously if you've used older versions of programs, it might have been the only option at the time as well, you might have just put those items in as text. And therefore, you know, you, you'll need to, ideally, now in Dorico, you, can, you should be able to make them uh, proper items, hopefully. Oh, no, I'm not saying we can do all of them, but you know, in many cases, you might need to convert a few. So it's a good reason to have the text box ticked. Let me just have a look at the comments over here. Bear with me two seconds. So, um, are there plans for a Dorico reader for iOS or Android? Um, not at the moment, uh, unfortunately. I'd love to have something like that. Um, but no, I, I don't know of any plans at the moment for that. Um, there are other options. In a lot of cases, people are using things like um, 
four score on the, on an iPad, but of course you need a you know, you'd have to use a PDF for that, and that's where one of the options in Dorico for printing a PDF uh, can be quite useful. So you can take one or more parts um, in print mode. Oh, I'm kind of loading uh, files now. Here we go in print mode. Then when you do graphics and PDF, that's what I commonly use. You could potentially also export music XML and use things like StaffPad now uh, uh, and do it that way, but we don't have anything, unfortunately, for Dorico at the moment. Um, let me just carry on with these comments. Uh, somebody said they often wind up with orphan voices when pasting music from one staff into another staff's second voice. Um, how do I clean it up? Um, in a lot of cases, Dorico will sort those voices out for you anyway. It will depend on the individual case, but Dorico doesn't worry too much if you've selected something and the stems are the wrong direction. You can use F to flip things. Um, and you can also select rests. I don't think I've got anything with voices in it here, which is a shame. I should have found an organ file. Um, you can, you, if you select rests, then you can use edit remove rests. And actually in some cases, that will fix the problem for you. Hey, in other cases, when you want to sort out what's going on with voices, then you want to turn on note and rest colours and voice colours. And that will then show you, um, I mean, these are all uh, the same voice at the moment, but you'll see the different colours. And it may be that in some cases you need to select some notes and you can use the voices option and you can use change voice to swap it back to the, in my case, I only have an upstem voice, but you may have multiple up and down stem voices listed here, and you can swap it back to the correct voice. Um, you may also, in some cases, want to do that with a filter. So you can select, for example, again, I use select more for this. I can select more uh, to select lots of the music, um, either a system or the, the whole flow or whatever you need, and then you can filter for a specific voice and then use change voice to change it into a, a particular voice if you've got some of those wrong or if they've imported uh, and done that. But if you've got a particular example, um, uh, Mr. Penger's laugh, then uh, email me and maybe it'd be a, a good case for a, another session. Um, will there be, I'm not quite sure, that's an instruction of notes where the height is first, then the duration. Ah, you mean pitch before duration or duration before pitch? Yes, maybe. Not at the moment. Maybe it's coming, but when I import XML, I have to a lot of flags I have to remove one by one. Ah, yes. Um, now, did I have any in these files? Bear with me a second. Uh, let's have a look. I tend to turn all my signposts off. Sometimes you'll get signposts and they're useful because it's telling you about the upbeat um, and the break here <coughs> in the bar. Sometimes you'll get signposts because, hopefully this one, because it's got some percussion in it, Yes, you get things like this. Now what happens here is that when you've imported the file, I've got some extra text items to tell me the clarinets are definitely an A. These, um, these options here, in the music XML file, it said the key is, and we've put a key in, great. And then it said the timpani has, is in A minor. Well, it's not really. What you mean is it doesn't have a key. So you can delete these. Um, and I'm gonna delete those ones as well because the percussion here knows that it shouldn't display a key signature. So these ones, you can delete all of these, you don't need them. Uh, they're just imported as kind of extra items, a bit like these clefts. They've been imported as extra items and you can delete them. However, the timpani and some instruments, horns are another case. Uh, what are the horns doing in this one? Are they, they're, they're displaying um, uh, keys at the moment anyway. Um, but some instruments, what you'll need to do is, when you go to setup again, and for example, for the timpani, uh, here, if you do change instrument, it not only fixes the transposition, the name and everything else, but if you, for example, look for timpani, you can have timpani, no key signature. And you can just do a change instrument for that and that will also fix that. So sometimes, excuse me, sometimes you get signposts for those kind of things and that's a good way of doing it. I, you, you asked, is there a way to remove them all at once? You can filter those things and remove them if you want to, but in many cases, I'd like I need I need to know why they're there before I press delete. Um, so I'll often kind of you know if you zoom out, especially the beginning of the score, and have a look around for signposts and flags, and the same when you kind of go through the score, you can sometimes see them and find out. And then you, oh, why is that one there? Sometimes you get them as well if it was um, if if Dorico's displaying tuplets, 
but not displaying all the tuplet brackets or all the tuplet numbers because they've been turned off in the visibility. And so sometimes you want to keep them, so you don't necessarily want to delete them all. Um, but uh, hopefully that will help. Again, if you've got a sp particular case that d that doesn't answer, please email me and let me know. Um, when I import from PhotoSchool, we need to recreate empty condensed bars. I don't know of that one instantly. So, uh, Florent, if you've got an example, email it, discoveredorico at steinberg.de. Maybe it's a good case that I can either answer for you or we can look at in another um, another example. How to import harmonics? They should just import. I suppose there's a caveat here that I don't know off the top of my head if they're included in the XML format and what Dorico does with them and whether we import them correctly. So Paul, if you have a specific case, again, email me and um, um, I, can, I can then find out an answer for you on that, on that version. Um, Salvatore Dali, I never talk about what's coming next. Um, if, you don't know, if you don't know anything about the file, you should tick everything. Um, I think if you don't know anything about the music XML file and you haven't been given a, a PDF, another format of it, you've never seen it and you don't know what it is, then you're probably going to end up importing it multiple times. Um, you may well want to tick all of the options in the, the preferences. So, oh, it's just opened on my other screen. So you may, went, you may well want to tick all of these, but that's presuming that the other notation program or the other person got everything correct. So I would tend to, for example, not tick articulation placement. I tend to let Dorico do it because it's a difficult thing to reset in Dorico later. You have to do it on a kind of a, you can select all notes with articulations and turn them off, but you can't filter all of the notes and then only, you know, and filter articulations at the moment. Um, beam groupings are easy to fix later, so I leave them on. Stem directions are easy to fix later. Note durations are easy to fix later because you can just turn on or off force duration if you need to. So most of these, you know, uh, you can leave them on and know that they're, they're safe. Um, duplet and bracket visibility, I tend to leave that one on because again, it's e relatively easy to uh, flip using F or change those options. Um, you know, uh, but the, I think in some of these cases, you only want to leave them turned on if you know those are the options you want. Um, An articulation placement, I tend to have turned off. Um, so, but you may well end up, um, a country in a Eastern uh, is the, the username, you may well end up importing it more than once to, to have a look at it. Um, Dorico cannot currently be controlled by a new Arch controller. Are there plans for the future? Um, we potentially have plans, although not in the you know the next five minutes, for being able to control things. I presume you mean things like the mixer, um, you know, faders and things like that. Yes, we potentially have um, plans for that, but not in the next um, in the short term. Um, somebody's also oh Mark's also helping um, answer the question about Phot Photoscore Ultimate, and there's been a big upgrade, and in his workflow is using an old versions of some things. So yes, it is worth saying that, in, um, of course, the same with Dorico. Recently, Dorico's export didn't include a bunch of things, which it now does. So again, I said at the beginning of the session, update to 3.1.10, there are some new things in the, in the XML export for Dorico, and I'm sure that will apply to many other programs as well. Um, any other questions? XML from Guitar Pro Guitar Bends. There are some things we need to add with Guitar Bends. So I'm sure we will be uh, looking at some of that one as well. Um, the red signpost with an X inside, yes. Uh, again, they're often can be deleted because all it means is that something is specifically put in an, an extra bar line and you didn't need the extra one. It's a bit like the extra clefts you get at the beginning. You can often just delete them. Um, select more again may help if you select one and then you select more to, to filter the others, you might be able to de delete a lot of them at the same time. Um, a question about rhythm sections. Does Dorica recognize slashes? Yes, and slashes without stems? Yes, I believe so, because um, I've imported a bunch of those as well. Um, so yes, you should be able to, um, to recognize slashes and stems. Again, in some cases, it depends what's in the file. Uh, if you have a case that's proving me wrong, please email it in and let's have a look at it. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, oh, sorry. Oh, the chat just jumped then. Every time a new one comes in, it's jumping. Sorry, bear with me a second. 
Um, I wanted to look at one other thing as well, so let me just check there's nothing I missed. Um, uh, the, can you turn on force duration by default? Uh, yes, one of the preferences in here for note durations, if you tick that, then all the note durations will be imported as if input using force durations. So hopefully that helps that one. And I think that's the best import from Cubase to do all notations in Dorico. Again, it depends on what exactly, a Cubase or another door, it depends on exactly what you've worked on. If you have added, I don't know, if you've added dynamics and you've added some of these things in the score editor in Cubase, yes, import a music XML file. If actually what you want is some of the playback information and the CC messages, you might want to import a MIDI file. It kind of depends, you know, what you've got. Um, Right, I'm going to uh, just move on for a second, so I'll come back to the chat again, otherwise this is all going to look very very dull, you're just looking at the same score all the time. So, I think in most cases, we've looked at now things that you can reset, things like, you know, beaming options, and, you know, you can reset articulations from the properties panel, the adding the, uh, leave that text option on, because that will, that will help you kind of tidy up a few things. M I delete all the extra clefts at the beginning of the file, um, probably do a change instrument. In a lot of cases, I do a change instrument on every single instrument just so that I know it's definitely correct with the right transpositions and ranges and everything else, but you can do that later. It also corrects the names and you know and various other things, especially if you're coming from a door because you might just have track names which might not be that useful, so do a change instrument and then go to the play menu and reload the playback template so you don't, you're not using extra slots that you don't need. Um, I'll time link to all of those bits as well so that you can jump around if you need to in this video when you watch it again later. The next thing I just wanted to look at before I let you all go, I know you, you can go whenever you like, it's fine. Um, but since we're in lockdown, I'll carry on for a minute. I was sent a file and the first thing about this one was it was, it was interestingly called an idiot in power. And I don't know if they mean in the current climate, if they're talking about anybody in particular, or do they mean me? I'm not really in power, so I presume it's not me, but I, I really don't know. Anyway, that aside, what they asked is, if they're using Divisi, here we have a, some Divisi violins, and I think if they use it, yeah, this one also uses Nate Performer, can you get different playback for Divisi sections? So for example, for these dynamics, can you have different dynamics in, in a couple of instruments in Divisi? And can you, you know, if you if one of them switches to solo, could you have a solo sound instead of the section sound? So I wanted to look at things like that. So I said, yep, no problem. Let's have a, if we can, let's have a quick look. So in play mode, let's look at what's going on down here. Uh, we don't need the piano, thank you. We've got a violin one here. So all of the notes that we have in the violin one part, depend, doesn't matter wh where they are in this, uh, you know, divisi bit, they all appear in this, uh, this MIDI track. So uh, here, look, here's the note I've just selected, and the other notes are all from the, the, other, um, uh, the other part of the Divisi section. And you want different playback for these. So over here, there's an, uh, uh, an option for enable independent playback of voices. So what Dorico effectively is doing is these are actually two voices. Um, you know, your, your upper one here and the lower one down here. So what you can do is you can go into play mode, and you can turn on this little toggle switch, which this lets you turn on the options. You can then choose upstem violin uh, one. So that'll be the, uh, the, the top one. And then uh, you may not have noticed, but over here on the right hand side, as I was doing that, it's also loaded an extra slot for note performer. So the, the act of turning this on and saying that, you know, it's now said, okay, you've got two independent voices, upstem one and two. Uh, what that's done is loaded over here, let's press the little E, it's loaded an extra slot, because it was running out, in Note Performer for violins. So, upstem voice one is on Note Performer two, which is this one up here, and it's using channel one, and this one, upstem voice two, is using 06 Note Performer, which is this new one it's just loaded, on slot one, okay? So now, the playback is now, uh, and uh, just to, to it, I suppose. If I uh, select this one here, it's not terribly exciting, unfortunately, this bit. So, just this one here. See, 
these notes are the only ones that are appearing in this uh, th this new slot. So now I've got independent playback of those. So I can change the volume on this, I could solo or mute it, I could change the pan position on it, or I could change the, the sample. So if later on, I need a slightly more complicated uh, option. Um, let's say uh, somewhere there was, yeah, it goes back to unison there. And then let's say from here, we wanted to add a new divisi point. So let's say I'm going to add another one here. So I'm going to go to staff and change divisi. I'm going to add a solo section at this point. So I'd want a different sound now. So now from this point, let's say we're going to a solo section. <coughs> Now, um, so I've now got solo and, and, and a glee ultra underneath. So let's just presume that this will be the solo section. Now, what this hasn't done yet, hasn't changed anything in play mode. I've still got upstem voice one and upstem voice two, but I want a different sound. What you need to do is, I said it was using voices. So you'd need to select. So you probably need to put in a unison later when they all come back or whenever the divisi changes again. Select all of the notes that will be in that solo and use a right click voices and do change voice and you want to want to create a new upstem voice probably now it doesn't look any different here it would be a different voice color if you wanted to turn on voice colors but in play mode we now have a third oh we don't have a third one ah yes so did i actually change those i found let's put the voice colors on because then we can see what we're doing so we go voice colors so yeah, so we've, we've now, for, for these ones, we can get a different voice color. So now what you can do is you could say, oh, well, actually, you know, you can specify now for all of these ones, and you could add a third one if you wanted to. So in fact, we can add other ones as well. Uh, and you can also add a new slot. So you could say over here, if we wanted a new slot. Now, if this is Halion, you can just add in a new slot, but Make Performer is, uh, uh, wants you to, wants to do it for you. So let's say let's see if we can make this look different as well, just so you can tell what's going on. So we'll say uh, voices change. Let's go for a yeah. Let's have another one. So because in Dorico you can add lots of voices if you want to, um, and they will all just you know they'll, they'll all get uh, different colours and things. Then you can come into here and you can then say, oh, why is that one not working? Have I added this to the wrong instrument? Look, I've added it to the piano. Oh dear, I've just done Divisi Piano. Did nobody notice? I've just seen Mark's message, you have the wrong instrument. Thanks, Mark. I wish this was a voice call. Right, let's do it again, shall we? So, as a recap, ha ha, add a Divisi. So we've now got solo violin. Make sure you're on the right staff. Choose the, uh, the all of the notes that you need to be the solo and make them into a new upstem voice. They're a different colour. Ah, now when you find them over here, our piano here has multiple voices that we really don't need. I can reset those later. We now have an upstem voice three. So this will be our soloist. So we can put though into Note Performer on, uh, on the sixth uh, one over here, or the one that's labelled six, which has loaded a new slot for us. And we can choose, uh, I've, I've now done it twice. Uh, I'm gonna say, all right, I'll use the third one then. Why not? Now it's there. And now if I wanted to, I could use the override option here and I could override and say, oh, I have a different sound. Like, for example, a violin soloist or it could be a section, solo violin section member you choose. So now, although it looks like, let me just move that out of the way. It looks like it's just the, you know, the, the same uh, option here in Dorico. Actually, this will now give you different playback um, because all of these notes, so if I select these ones here, they will be playing from this other uh, option. So here, they're playing from this one. Whereas earlier on, on the same staff, these ones were playing from the first uh, option, and these ones down here will be playing from one of these other slots. Oh no, that's the Glial tree bit. That's, uh, it was much earlier, wasn't it, when I did the earlier? Here we go. So that was the first one. This was the second one, and the later one at bar 36 is this third one. So you can now choose. Now, it, I, it may be potentially a little bit confusing as to who's going where. I understand that. Um, but that's why 
the voice colors may help you because you can you can have a look at those and see what's going on. But Dorico does at least give you this option for uh, choosing a different voice here and then choosing the different playback. And that different playback could be a different sample library. So you could say you want East West for something and Spitfire for something else, for example. Um, it, it doesn't matter. You you can just choose those kind of options. So I just thought that was you know it, it was worth showing because it also came up in um, in that. Uh, uh, in a thread, I think it was on Facebook that one, or it was emailed in anyway. Um, yes, sorry, thanks, Mark. Yeah, I wasn't listening. You were, are you yelling as well? Yeah, sorry, just I, I wasn't listening. So let me just check for any of the other questions because this is uh, scrolled on ahead. Bear with me for a second. Uh, somebody's asked, can you write music with forced duration on by default? Uh, yes, but I wouldn't. Um, there's a question about lyrics when condensing. I think we need to add an option for that, really. Um, condensing is nice, but you will sometimes get too many lyrics at the moment, unfortunately. Um, question that adding a second voice alto and changing the note duration can't change the lyrics of the second voice is there a way to do that yes well if you choose the note that's in the other voice and then add the lyric then you can do it that way but that might not answer your question if that doesn't answer it email me uh, discoverdorico at steinberg.de and I'll, I'll take a look at the file for you it's always best if you can send a file in because then we we're looking at the, the actual case um, I think that's mainly it. Oh, and a couple of new questions. Uh, the possibility to load audio files, um, not directly. Um, you can do it, but you can only do it if you use the video option. Uh, so you can add a video file to Dorico because then that will be in sync. The video file can have an audio track on it. There's a much earlier Discover Dorico session. If you can't find it, email me and I'll send you a link to it, where I did a kind of transcription type option um, just make your audio file into a video file and then you can import it and, and then you can use, for example, the, the tempo option at the top up here in um, the, the time option, sorry, the time track, and you can draw in uh, tempo changes to match that file if you want to. The reason you can't do it with an audio file by default is that the video engine we use um, doesn't allow you to import audio, mainly because the video engine is also from Nuendo and Cubase. We share the same video engine. And of course, in Nuendo and Cubase, you don't need the video engine to import an audio file uh, because obviously they can import audio files. So one day, hopefully, we'll have an option to import audio. But you don't really just want to import it. and sh You also want to probably see it and potentially some other things. So there's some work that we'd need to do to show you the waveform and that kind of thing. So it would be a nice option maybe one day in Dorico, but not at the moment. But at the moment, have a look for that discover session where we do a transcription kind of options uh, and importing uh, using the video file option. Um, off topic from Frank. Um, I think I understand, but I'll have a look at that one later. It's about grace notes and after the one after the bar line or before the bar line, and yes. Yes, you probably can. Uh, there probably is a problem there. I I don't I can't think of an example where I'd need that, but yes, I'm sure you can, Frank. Uh, can you send me an example and we can have a look at it? That'd be good. Um, considered adding a feature to show the chords for selected notes. Ah, oh, um, yes, we don't add chord symbols by default, but if you do have a chord um, or anything you've got selected. Have a look down here in the bottom corner and it may well tell you what the chord is for the selected notes. So um, if you select, you know, sel make multiple selections of things and it may tell you in a lot of cases what those chords are. Um, not necessarily in all cases and it would be nice if we had chord symbols. Um, so for example, this one's saying potentially it's a G major seven plus alterations. Um, you can, of course, with the chords popover, shift Q, play that chord on a MIDI keyboard and it'll put the chord in for you. But um, Yes, it, it doesn't do that from the notes that are on the page at the moment. So I've reached the hour. I should probably actually let you go. Um, hopefully this session has been useful just on a kind of a workflow front of how to import things, some of the problems you may have come up with. It may be that actually you say, 
you know what? There's some other things that I also have problems with. Please email them to me, um, discoverdorico at steinberg.de, and let's look at some of those others. If we need to do an extension to this session another time and look at other cases, then uh, we're, we're, I'm more than willing to do that. Um, so yes, uh, I'll... I'll um, don't think there's any other questions on there. That's good at the moment. So yes, uh, so the next session will be, of course, uh, end of next month. Um, what would you like to see in the next session? That's another thing you can email me on, discoverdorico. It's all one word, discoverdorico at steinberg.de. Um, and what you'd like to see in the next Discover Dorico session. And um, if there's any, I said after, as soon as I finish this one, I'll write down the time link. So if you need to jump back to how did he reset that thing? What was that option for? Then you can uh, jump to other sections of this video should you need to. So thank you all for watching. Um, thank you all for uh, putting up with me. And uh, I'll see you all, at least virtually, uh, next month. Thank you very much. Bye.